Hello and welcome to my next video on plant responses. Now just like animals, plants need to respond to their environment as well. Now plants have to do the same way to make sure you know they can grow and get enough light, enough nutrients. And the main way plants control is using hormones because they don't have a nervous system like animals, but they do have a hormone system. Now, just like hormones in animals, they work in the exact same way. They have a complementary shape to receptors on certain cells. They can bind together, causing an effect to happen. So the target cells are the ones that have the receptors that bind to complementary hormones. Uh, so it's just like with animal hormones. And the way these hormones move about is by active transport, diffusion, and unlike animals, mass flow. That's in the phloem sap or in the xylem vessels. So just remember mass flow from unit one. Now, there are five main hormones you need to know about, and these are auxins, cytokinins, gibberellins, abscisic acid, and ethene. Now, auxins, they are responsible particularly for growth. They work in cell elongation because most cells in a plant don't divide because they have a cell wall, and the cell wall is quite rigid. It's, you can't get it to divide. But what you can do is make it elongate, and that's how most cells, apart from meristematic tissue, will change. So most cells elongate, meristematic tissue, so that's like the cambium in xylem and phloem, those are the ones that divide. Auxins also inhibit side shoot growth. So this means if you have a plant, it will normally just go completely straight with all the leaves growing at the tip. Auxins stop these side shoot just growing. It also inhibits leaf abscission. That is um, basically leaves falling off. You don't want leaves falling off all the time. Cytokinins, these are the ones that are responsible for cell division, so that is um, in the xylem and phloem, the meristematic tissue. Gibberellins, they account for seed germination and growth of stems. So they help stem growth and when, because you don't want to see germinating straight away, you want to have the right conditions, so moisture, nutrients, good amount of sunlight, you want all the good conditions. Abscisic acid inhibits seed germination. So gibberellins start seed germination, so if you have a rush of gibberellins, you'll get the seeds germinating. Abscisic acid is around before that to make sure they don't germinate and don't grow. It also makes sure that the stomata will close when the plant is stressed. So remember, um, xerophytic plants will have you know their stomata closed regularly if there's a lack of water because they need to not lose water by transpiration. Abscisic acid is the hormone that does this. And ethene, this promotes fruit ripening in plants that have fruits. So, plant growth. Now, as I said, only meristematic tissues can divide, and there are four types you need to know about. Apical merist meristems, lateral bud meristems, lateral meristems, and intercalary meristems. I'm going to go through briefly what these mean. Apical meristems are located at the tips of the roots and shoots. So these are what make the roots and shoots get longer, so they're right at the point. Lateral bud meristems are found in the buds. Um, now these could give rise, rise to side shoots. Now buds are like... Um, if, you've ever, if you've ever seen a plant, you'll see a little bud. It's kind of just a little bit poking out. That's the side shoot where they can form. Lateral memory stems are found in the cylinder near the outside of the root and shoot and are responsible for roots and shoots getting wider. So they're basically, you know, on the outside of the meristem. Oh, of the uh, shoots and roots, sorry. That's where the meristems are found. And not all plants, but some plants have intercalary meristems. And these are located between the nodes. So if you see, like, um, bamboo's a good example. You know you have those little bulges in bamboo at various points. Those are nodes. And, they are lo and this intercalary meristem is located in between the nodes. And growth between the nodes is responsible for the shoot getting longer. So that's what these meristems do. Now, next more thing is to remember that cell division generally happens at the tip of the plant. And see, cell elongation happens just behind the plant. So you get the new cells forming, and then they elongate. Now, also, auxins are produced at the apex, so at the tip, and then they tra travel down the plant to the cells in the zone of elongation, causing them to elongate. So auxins are made at the tip, where the cells divide, and move down to the bit behind the tip, where the cells elongate. Now, 
How auxins work is that they increase the stretchiness of the cell wall by promoting active transport of um, protons or hydrogen ions into the cell wall via ATPase, which is an enzyme. And that's found on the plasma membrane. Now, this produces a very low pH, so very acidic conditions, which is perfect for the enzyme, which will um, cause wall loosening. So, what happens is these enzymes will break bonds between cellulose, microfibrils. So, you know, remember how cellulose is made up? You have microfibrils and macrofibrils. It's kind of, it's, yeah, but those chains of cellulose. And these will have bonds with the surrounding matrix and will cause them to break and this makes the walls less rigid allow them to expand as the cell takes in water that's how it happens water is taken in and the cell expands so remember if normally you take in water the cell the you know the cytoplasm will push against the cell if um, the cell wall if you have a stretchy cell wall it'll be allowed to expand tropisms not to be confused with trophisms now a tropism is just directional growth. So if you have an external stimulus, stimulus, it will cause the plant to grow in this certain direction. And there are four types. And we're going to look at one in detail, and that's phototropism. And this is when shoots grow towards the light. You have geotropism, where roots grow towards the pull of gravity. You have chemiotropism, which is when they respond to chemicals. And thigmotropism, where shoots of climbing well, basically, like ivy will wrap around something, they grow towards that. Now, the reason why these are important is because phototropism, you need things growing towards the light for photosynthesis. Geotropism, it particularly happens in the roots. This anchors them in the soil and helps them take up water, which is needed to support the cells and also is used in photosynthesis. Chemiotropism is for um, a flower, the pollen tubules grow down the style attracted by chemicals towards the ovary where fertilisation can take place. So they basically move to the ovaries so they can fertilise themselves. And thigmotropism is important just so they get, you know, structure and support. Now the one we're going to look at is phototropism. Now here I've done two diagrams. They're the ones in the book, but I've shown them here. Now, why a shoot will move towards light is because one side is elongating more or faster than the other side. So if you have, you know, two things which say are a meter in height, but then one side becomes, you know, one and a half meters in height and the other one is still one meter, but the tips still must be connected. So they kind of bend over. So because the one on the bottom will have a shorter length than the one on the top. Now, this happens because the auxins will cause cell elongation, as we said earlier. Now, light will shine. So if you look at the, the one on the uh, right side, light is coming in from the right. And this causes, this means that the right side of the plant has light on it. The left side of the plant doesn't. So the left side is in the shade, causing auxins to move towards the shaded side, causing cell elongation on the shaded side. This means that the shaded side will bend over so the tip is facing the light. Now, why I've drawn the one that's straight up as well, so it is light coming from all directions, which means there's no, literally the plants need to grow straight upwards. The auxins will go down equally both sides, elongating both sides, and then at the bottom they are broken down by enzymes because you don't want the whole plant elongating, just that tip area. Now, in the book, they give you a few reasons why, well, they give you a reason why this might actually happen. We're not 100% sure. But there are two enzymes we've possibly identified called phototropin 1 and phototropin 2. Their activity is promoted by blue light. So there's a lot of phototropin 1 activity on the light side, but progressively less activity towards the darker side. And this gradient is thought to cause the redistribution of auxins. Shedding leaves. Now, this is um, abscission, which is when you shed leaves. Now, cytokinins will stop the leaves of deciduous, that's evergreen trees, senescing. That's aging. They turn brown and yellow and die. 
And this makes this happens because it makes sure the um, leaf axis a sink. Now, if you remember from AS, a sink is a place where the phloem will deliver sucrose to. So you cont um, continuously getting this source of sucrose um, and it has a good supply of nutrients. However, if the size of kinin production drops, then the leaves will enter senescence, so they'll get yellow and start dying, and then will be shed. That's abscission. Now, auxin inhibits as abscission by acting on cells in the abscission zone. So that's auxins stop abscission happening. But when you do sometimes want, you don't want you know dead leaves still attached to the plant. So you want abscission to occur sometimes. Now, leaf senescence, the old aging dying of a leaf, causes auxin production at the tip of the leaf to drop. This makes cells in the abscission zone more sensitive to another growth substance called ethene. A drop in auxin concentration also increases um, production of ethene, and this in turn um, this increases the production of the enzyme cellulase, which digests the walls of the cells in the abscission zone. Eventually, separate basically the leaf will then fall off. So basically, it's this ethene. So auxins have two effects in this process. The first one is when auxins are low, they will make the abscission zone more sensitive to ethene, which is the thing that will inevitably cause cellulase and to be formed and cause a leaf to fall off. But not only does it make it more um, sensitive to ethene, it also increases the production of ethene. So not you've got more sensitive to ethene and more of ethene, which will then cause the um, production of the enzyme cellulase, which will then digest the leaf tip. The, um, I think it's the area between the uh, petriole and the stem, that bit. So, yeah. Apical dominance. Now, this is nothing where I've just drawn a diagram for and I'm going to explain it because it's a bit easier. Basically, apical dominance says that leaves will grow at the tip, at the apex, rather than side shoots. It's, so basically, the tip is dominant. That is what apical dominance means. But if you remove the tip, you remove that tip of the plant, there's no auxin made because auxin is made at the tip. So if you remove the tip, no auxin is made. And so if you remember, auxin moves down on the plant and stops side shoots. If you remove the auxin, side shoots will grow. That's the important thing you need to know about that. In the book, they actually go through a whole experiment. On um, page Controlling Plant Growth, 224, 225, they go through an experiment to do with apical dominance and experiments to do with gibberellins and stem elongation. Um, you do not need to know that in a huge amount of detail. Um, so it's easy just to read over that once you're familiar with it, but actually knowing what apical dominance is is much more important. So now the commercial use. Now we're going to look at the commercial use of four of these hormones. Auxins. Now, auxins are used for a number of reasons. For cuttings, creating seedless fruits and herbicides. Now what you do is once you've um, taken a cutting, if you put this cutting in rooting powder which contains auxins, it will encourage root growth. Uh, if you treat unpollinated flower of auxins, you can promote the group growth of seedless fruit. Because applying auxin promotes o ovule growth, which triggers automatic production of auxin by tissues in the developing fruit, helping to complete the developmental process. And herbicides. Artificial auxins are used as herbicides to kill weeds. They are transported in the phloem to all parts of the plant, and they can act within the plant for longer, because they are not a close fit to the enzymes that break them down. Now these promote shoot growth so that much of the stem cannot support itself, so it buckles and dies. Basically the auxins will... Um, gibberellins are used in fruit production, brewing, sugar production and plant breeding. So for fruit production, again I'm, I'm pretty much using the book here because it just gives examples. Um, yeah, So you can read this as well but it's not hard, it's just literally learn these examples. The gibberellins de delay senescence in citrus fruit fruits, extending the time fruits can be left unpicked and making them available for longer in the shops. Gibberellins acting with cytokinins can uh, make apples elongate to improve their shape, so you haven't got squashed apples. And without gibberellins, bunches of grapes are very compact. This restricts the growth of individual grapes, so when you add gibberellins you get more space so the grapes get bigger. Brewing. Um, in beer you need malt, which is um, usually produced in a malt house at a brewery. This is when barley seeds are germinated. 
Now, what will happen is the seed produces amylase enzymes that break down stored starch into maltose. Usually the genes for amylase production are switched on by naturally occurring gibberellins. Adding gibberellin can speed up the process, which means you get malt quicker. Sugar production. Spraying sugar cane with gibberellin stimulates growth between the nodes, making the stems elongate. This is useful because sugar cane stores sugar in the cells of the internodes. So basically you get more sugar, you get a high yield. And plant breeding. Now, gibberellins can just help induce seed growth. But also if you stop plants making gibberellins, um, it means that plants will be short and stocky and ensure that internodes of crop plants stay short helping to prevent lodging and that happens in wet summers when stems bend over because of the weight of water collected on the ripened seed heads. Cytokinins are used for colour because they can delay leaf senescence so which means you get you don't get that brown yellow colour you get a nice you know usually green colour um, and also means that once they've been picked you won't get that senescence occurring. They also are used in tissue cultures. They promote bud and shoot growth from small pieces of tissue taken from a parent plant. Finally, ethene is used in fruit ripe, well, it's used in lots of things. It speeds up root fri- ripening in apples, tomatoes, and citrus fruits. Promotes fruit drop in cotton, cherry, and walnut. Promotes female sex expression in cucumbers, reducing the chance of self pollination and increasing the yield. Very specific example. And promoting lateral growth in some plants, yielding compact flower stems. One thing about ethene is that ethene is naturally a gas so it um, they've developed this chemical called 2-chloroethylphosphonic acid which can be um, sprayed in solution and releases ethene once inside the plant. So that is all. Um, the important things, the hormones, tropism, those are the two important things, you know, leaf shedding. The technical stuff, I've gone through in lots of detail there. The two green pages the house science work pages they are never questioned that much so i've given you some examples but to be honest as you'll see in a later video on animal behavior they want examples in this case so it's best to go and research your own examples so thank you for watching um, in conclusion we have five hormones that's auxins gibberellins cytokinins abscisic acid and ethene you have tropism you have phototropism geotropism um chemiotropes and ones like that, apical dominance you need to know about, and the commercial use of plant hormones. Thank you for watching, leave any comments or questions you have, and goodbye.